Hello friends, today in this session we will discuss solution of questions in transportation engineering which were asked in 2020 gate examination and in the forenoon session and there were seven questions in the forenoon session. The first question is like this, in an urban area a median is provided to separate the opposing streams of traffic. As per IRC 86 1983, the desirable minimum width in meter expressed as integer of the median is. Now here I am showing you the page from IRC 86 1983 which talks about the medians. और अगर आप इस पेज को देखें सेक्शन 6.2.7 इसमें लास्ट लाइन अगर आप देखें इट सेज दैट एब्सोल्यूट मिनिमम विड्थ ऑफ मीडियन इज 1.2 मीटर बट डिजायरेबल इज 5 मीटर एंड देयरफॉर आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज 5 मीटर सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज वेरी सिंपल स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड एंड इट सेज the Los Angeles test for stone aggregates is used to examine and there are four options specific gravity, abrasion resistance, soundness and crushing strength. The complete name of this test is Los Angeles abrasion test and therefore it basically determines the abrasion value or hardness of the aggregate. Specific gravity you know it does not require any test apparatus, soundness is the resistance against weathering action, crushing is to determine the strength of the aggregate and there the current correct answer is B that is abrasion. Question number 3 is a road in a hilly terrain is to be laid at a gradient of 4.5 percent. The horizontal curve of radius 100 meter is laid at a location on this road. Gradient needs to be eased due to combination of curved horizontal and vertical profile of the road. As per IRC, the compensated gradient in percent round off to one decimal place is. Now here the gradient is 4.5 percent, radius of the curve is 100, 100 meter and as per IRC the grade compensation is Thirty plus R upon R with a maximum value of seventy five by R. Seventy five by R. R is hundred meter. So if you see this, this is thirty plus hundred upon hundred. That is one point three percent. But this cannot be more than point seven five percent. And therefore, the compensated gradient, compensated gradient will be three uh, four point five minus point seven five, that is three point seven five percent. Now, this IRC code further says that if the gradient is four percent or lesser, there is no need to compensate. There is no need to ease it out. And even if the compensated gradient should not be less than 4% and therefore this 3.75 should be capped 4%. That is the answer, 4%. Next question, question number 4, the appropriate design length of a clear way is calculated on the basis of normal takeoff condition. Which of the following options correctly depicts the length of the clear way? Now here four options are given, four diagrams are given. Now let me explain this, how we determine the runway length for a normal takeoff case. Now this is the runway, the aircraft will start its takeoff run from this end and let us say it leaves the runway at this point, right. Now this is what we call the lift off distance 
एल ओ डी लिफ्ट ऑफ डिस्टेंस इट बेसिकली लीव द ग्राउंड देन जस्ट टू टेक केयर ऑफ वेरिएशन अमंग पायलट इट इज टेकन हंड्रेड फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ एल ओ डी दिस इज देंथ लेटर से हंड्रेड फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ लिफ्ट ऑफ डिस्टेंस नाउ एयरक्राफ्ट इज कंसिडर्ड टू हैव टेकन ऑफ सक्सेसफुल्ली when it attains the height of 35 feet that is 10.5 meter now this is distance to 35 feet d35 and again just to take care of variability among pilots again 15% is increased and that is 115% of D thirty five. Let us say that distance. But this total area here need not be the full strength payment, and therefore a part of it can be clear way. Now clear way, what Ikao says, clear way should not be more than half of this distance. So clear way is should not be more than half of. 1.15 d35 or d10.5 because the question is 10.5 minus 1.15 l o d now in the question this is given 1625 meter so it is half of 1625 meter Minus, sorry, one point one five minus one point one five, and LOD is given eight hundred seventy five meter. Eight hundred seventy five meter. Clear way should not be more than this distance, and this is four thirty one point two five meter, and because the question says integer, so let us say. Four thirty-two meter, and if you look at the four options which are given in the question, the option B says that the clear way is four thirty-two meter, and that is the correct answer. Option B. Next question is the relationship between traffic flow rate Q and density is shown in the figure. now this is a very typical question and i don't think it is a correct question but i'll explain to you how this kind of problem can be solved that is the speed that is the flow and density curve and this is parabolic right and here there are two three lines drawn now these are four lines drawn 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 the the question is the shock wave condition is depicted by which line and there are four options four options now shock wave is created when there is a change in the flow and the density the first option is flow with respect to point 4 and 5 now this is a horizontal line q4 is equal to q5 this will not create any shock wave shock wave is created when there is a blockage there is no blockage here the speed of shock wave you should understand that it is given by q2 minus q1 upon k2 minus k1 change in flow divided by change in density between two points on this curve so option 1 is not correct second option is flow changing from point 3 to 7 this is 3 this is 7 now here you can find out the shock wave q7 minus q3 upon corresponding density k7 minus k3 that is the speed of shock wave if shock wave speed is 
positive, it goes forward. If it is negative, it goes backward. That is okay because it will create a shock wave here. So question, the option B is correct. C is flow changing from 2 to 6. Now this is also, this can also be a shock wave. Now here the density is high, flow is low. Here the flow is high, density is low. And therefore this can also represent a shock wave. Wave speed will be Q6 minus Q2 upon K6 minus K2. This can also be. So option C is also correct. And that is why I told you that this is not a good question to be asked because it has confusion. Where in this question only one answer is correct. But there are two answers which are which seem to be correct. And the last one flow with respect to point 1. Now this is a capacity maximum flow. And for generation of a shock wave you need two points. A single point cannot generate the shock wave and therefore this is also not correct. So that is all about question number 5. Question number 6 is a double bar is placed at a contraction joint. When contraction occurs the concrete slab cracks at predetermined location. This is a fact. Identify the arrangement which shows the correct placement of double bar and the place of occurrence of the contraction crack. Now here, let me just tell you that why do we need to provide double bar at a contraction joint? When the concrete temperature or the slab temperature is lower than the laying temperature of the slab, then there will be contraction in the slab, contraction in the concrete. When concrete temperature is lower than the laying temperature. Now if this, if the slab is quite long, then this contraction of the slab can create contraction stresses. And if this stress is larger than the tensile stress of the tensile strength of the concrete, then crack will develop. To prevent that, double bars are provided at the contraction joint also. Double bar is provided here and that is the contraction joint which is basically made. We make, we make a groove here. If D is the depth of the slab, double bar is always placed at mid height D by 2. Double bar is placed at mid height of the slab. This is the depth of the groove is generally D by 3 to D by 4. And the crack because of contraction of the slab will occur at this groove. We permit this. So this basically this double bar help in transfer of the load across this crack. So if you look at the options A, B, C, D, only B resemble this figure. Double bar is always provided at the mid height. The groove is D by 3 to D4 and this crack develops at this joint, at this joint. So option B is correct. The question number 7. And that was the last question in forenoon session. The question number 7 is like this. Traffic volume count has been collected on a two lane road section which needs upgradation due to severe traffic flow condition. Maximum service flow rate per lane is observed 1280 vehicle per hour at level of service C. The peak hour factor is reported 0 0.78125. Historical traffic volume count provides annual average daily traffic as 
12,270 vehicles per day. Split 60-40, assuming that traffic stream consists of all cars and drivers are regular commuters, the number of extra lanes to be provided is. Now, let me tell you, this is not a good question. This is not the uh, question which basically will give you any answer or answer will be very hypothetical. But let me tell you how it is to be solved. Now here, per lane traffic, per lane traffic at level of service C is 1, 2, 8, 0. Vehicles per hour. This is called maximum service flow. Maximum service flow rate at level service C. And the directional split is 60-40. 60% in dominant direction, 40% in the other direction. So, if you find out DDHV, that is directional design hourly volume, it will be AATT multiplied by 0 0.6, 60% in the dominant direction and this is 1, 2, 2, 7, 0 into 0 0.6 equal to 7, 3, 6, 2 vehicles per day. This is design, directional design hourly volume, 7362 vehicles per day. Now as per highway capacity manual method, as per HCM, the number of lanes required for this flow, number of lanes is DDHV divided by P cover factor multiplied by maximum service flow rate multiplied by FHV multiplied by FP. That is why I am telling you that is not a good question because this is generally not covered in any syllabus in an institute. DDHV is 7362. P cover factor is given. 0 0.78125, 0 0.78125, this is 1280. Now, FHV is the factor for heavy vehicles and it is given the question that all cars, all car traffic, so FHV is 1 and this is the commuters factor, just to take care of variation in the commuters, passengers. Now here also it says that all passengers are regular commuters. So this is also one. This is also one. No adjustment is required. So number of lanes required will be 7362 divided by 0 0.78125 multiplied by 1280 into 1 into 1. This is something like 7.362 or you can say 8. 8 lanes are required to accommodate this traffic. Presently number of lanes are only 2. So additional lane which are required will be 8 minus 2 that is 6. 6 lane. So answer is 8 minus 2 that is 6. So that is how this question is to be solved and that was the last question in the forenoon session. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any doubt, you can write in the comment box.